Hey guys, Beth the Whimsy Bee here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet a Scentsy Sunflower car hanger. So these are car hangers that go over your rearview mirror. They're double sided so that you can enjoy them inside your vehicle and then those that you meet can see the other side and enjoy it. It's called a Scentsy Sunflower Car Hanger because I created it with a pocket to hold these Bath & Body Work Car Fragrance Refills. So what you would do is you would peel the, um, peel the outside off of this, pop it in there, hang it up in your car, and then it's pretty and it'll make your car smell good. These would make great gifts as well. So I've got two examples to show you for colors and then the one I'm going to do today is going to be a different color. So the supplies that you're going to need is you're going to need medium four weight yarn or worsted weight. So I have got for the center Premier Just Yarn Tweed. This is a brown tweed. And you can see that it has orange flecks in it. And so I'm going to be using I Love This Yarn in Burnt Pumpkin. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a center with petals, another center with petals, and then we're going to crochet the hanger and sew them together. Very simple. I'm very confident this is a beginner friendly pattern. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a magic ring with about a two inch tail. Now you can make your magic ring any way you want to. You can do the chain two method. That's totally fine. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, you'll need a four millimeter hook. Now in your magic ring, you're going to do six single crochets. Pull that ring tight and then you're going to join to that first one with a slip stitch. Now in this pattern, every round you're going to chain one and single crochet in the same stitch. So that's what you're going to do here as well. Okay. Now we're going to start with your baubles. So in the same stitch as that single crochet, you're going to do your first bobble stitch. If you're not familiar with a bobble stitch, a bobble stitch is where you make a series of incomplete double crochets. Then you have so many loops on your hook according to the pattern. Then you pull through um, your yarn through all those loops and then you lock it off. Okay, so this is going to be a three double crochet bobble stitch. You're going in that same stitch, you're going to yarn over, go through that stitch, pull up, yarn over, pull through the two loops like you're going to make a double crochet. And instead of yarning over and pulling through those other two, we're going to leave those two on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over again, go through that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now you have three, and then you're going to do it once more. So yarn over, same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, and now you have four loops on your hook. Now you're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops. Now normally when you make a bobble stitch, you would yarn over and pull through this to lock it in, but we're not going to lock it in that way. Thanks to One Dog Wolf, i uh, seen how to do a different way to lock it in and I like it better. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into that next stitch 
and you're going to do a single crochet but you're not going to finish it so you're going to pull through and now you have half of your single crochet done now what we're going to do is we're going to pull it out and we're going to hop over that bobble stitch and push it forward from the back then we're going to pull it tight then you're going to yarn over and pull through and finish off that uh, single crochet and then pull your yarn tight and what that does is that pops that bobble stitch to the front so you have a single crochet in this next stitch and every stitch you're going to have a single crochet and a bobble so you're just going to continue to do that and i'll make this next bobble stitch with you so it's three double crochets that are incomplete so there's one two three four loops on your hook pull through now you want to move that bobble stitch over so you find that next stitch and you're going to start a single crochet you're going to pull it out hop over the to the back side whoops while pushing that bobble stitch forward pull the slack out of it yarn over finish that single crochet and then pull tight and see see how that makes that bobble stitch pop up to the front and you're going to come continue this pattern around you're going to have six bobble stitches and six single crochets so you guys go ahead and finish yours and i'll finish mine and i'll come back in a moment okay so i've made my six bobble stitches I've just made my last one and I'm ready to lock it in now when you lock in this last one you're going to lock it in with the slip stitch instead of a single crochet because we made that first single crochet when we started so put your um, hook through that single crochet and then yarn over and pull through and then go ahead and hop to the back and then just pull it on through and then pull out the slack to lock it in okay now chain one and now what we're going to do is your next round of bobble stitches is going to be double this so we have to create the foundation chain or stitches sorry to uh, make those bobbles in so what we're going to do is we're going to increase in these bobble stitch um, stitches so we're going to start in the same stitch that you just came out of and you're going to do two single crochets in that stitch Okay, and then you're going to hop over to this bobble and what you're going to do is you're going to do two uh, increases on each side of each bobble okay I'm on my last bobble and since I started on the left side of this one all I have to do is make an increase on the right side and then we're going to join to that first stitch with a slip stitch and we're going to chain one and make a single crochet in the same stitch now in this round of bobble stitches you're not going to be making your single crochet and your bobble stitch in the same stitch you're going to make them next to each other so you start your first stitch with a single crochet you go over to your next stitch and make a bobble stitch yarn 
and over, pull through, go to the next stitch, make your single crochet, but hop over, finish it off, pull out the slack, okay? Then you go to your next stitch and make that next bobble stitch. I don't remember if I said or not, but you've got to have 24 um, stitches in that round after you do your increases. So you do 24 and then the next round is one bobble, one single crochet, one bobble, single crochet for a total of 12 bobbles. So you're doubling your bobbles from the last round. And don't forget, sometimes you have to move that bobble over to find your right stitch. Next stitch hop over, finish off that single crochet, pull tight. Okay, and you can see we're starting that next round and it's giving it such pretty dimension. So you go ahead and finish up this round and I'll finish up mine and we'll come back together in just a moment. Okay, so I'm on my last bobble. I've just made the bobble and now I'm ready to lock it off and it's the same as your other row. We've already made that single crochet that's in the next stitch, so you're just going to lock it off with a slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through, pop it forward, pull that slip stitch on through, tighten it down, and now you're finished with your center. Before you cut it, this is very important, Go ahead and take your refill disc and make sure that it's large enough to fit inside. And it is, it's perfect. If yours is too small, what you'll wanna do is you'll want to uh, pull it out and you'll want to either loosen your tension or go up a hook size. And then if it's okay, then you're gonna go ahead and Passing this off. And what I'm gonna do is take my yarn needle and I'm gonna weave these ends kind of towards each other. And then you're just going to tie in multiple double knots to secure. And since this is going to be inside the pocket, there's no need to weave in these ends. You're just going to tie them in multiple double knots and then trim it close. And then you're done. You're done with that center. And now it's time to make our petals. So what I'm gonna do is make a slip knot with the two to three inch tail. Actually, it, it just needs to be a couple inches, not three inches. Okay, and then you're gonna bring in that uh, loop with your slip knot into any of the bobbles. 
and then you're going to chain one single crochet in the same stitch. Now what you're going to do for this first row of petals is just make your foundation round. I say row, but I mean round. So we're going to do um, single crochets all the way around, and it's going to be 24. So each bobble, just like we uh, did the foundation round for the second row of bobble stitches, each bobble will have a single crochet on each side. Okay, and so you just continue all the way around and I'll continue with mine, you continue with yours and we'll come back together. So I've made my 24 single crochets and now I'm just going to join with that first one with a slip stitch. Chain one, single crochet in the same stitch. Now in the next stitch, we're going to make our first petal. So that's going to consist of two double crochets. Then a triple crochet. And then a pico. A pico stitch is where you make a point on top of a stitch. So this is going to make the point on top of our petal. So what you do to make this point is you chain three and then you're going to slip stitch through that first chain that you made and then you continue on with the pattern which you make another triple a double remember this is all in one stitch then you chain two and slip stitch into that same stitch okay so there's our first petal now in the next stitch you're going to make a single crochet and just like with your bobbles you may have to pull that petal over to see your next single crochet because once you get going and your flower gets really full they get really hard to see so just make a single crochet and then in the next stitch, you're going to make another petal. Two double crochets. A triple crochet. A pico, one, two, three. Slip stitch into that first chain. A triple crochet a double crochet chain two slip stitch and then single crochet in the next stitch okay and you'll continue this all the way around and you'll end with a petal in your last stitch and then you're going to join it like we had before so you um, go ahead and complete all your petals you'll have a total of 12 petals and i'm going to go ahead and complete mine and then we'll come back together so i've just completed the last petal and you're going to join to that first single crochet with a slip stitch but you're going to join it from the back so pull your loop out a bit then flip your flower over insert your hook into that first single crochet then go through Grab that loop, pull the slack back out of it, 
and then pull your loop through to the back to create that slip stitch. And there you are. Your flower is complete. Now on the first flower that you make, you're going to go ahead and pull this out and trim it. And then tie it together with your beginning tail. So that was actually my second flower. This is my first. And you can see I just tied it together and then I just singed the end, ends. Singed the ends. Yeah, that's right. So on your second one, you're not going to tie it off. You're going to continue and we're going to make the hanger next. So pull that slack out of that loop and then you're going to chain 50. Whoops. So you go ahead and do yours and I'll chain my 50 and we'll come back together. Now I have my 50 chains done and what you're going to do is you're going to slip stitch three petals over to the left at the back. So I'm just going to slip stitch into the petal part. And now your hanger is complete. Now at this point, it might be a good idea to take this out to your vehicle and make sure that that's gonna fit over your rear view mirror. It should, but just in case, it's always a good idea to check. And then you can undo that slip stitch and add more chains if you need to. And now that our chain hanger is finished, we're going to attach these two flowers together and um, we're just going to sew them together like so. So you're going to need to cut a tail long enough to sew it together. And what I do is I just take my tail and I just kind of go around the center of the flower twice and then cut it. Then you'll pull out your loop. And now what you wanna do is go ahead and thread that tail in your needle. And you're gonna leave this tail. Now you're going to line up your sunflowers back to back. And then you're gonna bring that needle through the front of the front sunflower, okay? So now you're going to sew counterclockwise around your sunflower until you get to the other side of the hanger. And what I do is I just sew between these stitches here. I try not to get into the center and then I'll pull each stitch tight and then I'll go in here and come out here which is in a petal stitch and then I'll go into that single crochet stitch and you're just going to go all the way around sewing these two together and don't forget to stop when you reach the other side of the hanger so you go ahead and i'll finish mine and we'll come back together now i'm on my last stitch before the hanger and then i'm going to take it back through to the middle 
Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to get my refill and make sure that it's going to fit in that pocket. So here's my refill. Oh yeah, plenty of room. Okay. So then what you do is you just tie those two ends together inside the pocket in multiple double knots. Anytime I say tie it together, I mean it in multiple double knots. And then you're just going to trim it. And it's complete. And there you have a gorgeous sunflower car hanger to put inside your vehicle. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up. Uh, be sure to follow my channel for more crochet and crafting ideas. And you can also uh, follow me on my blog or social media, which is listed in the description. Thanks for watching.